it's uh, very exciting to be here. I actually just got back from three months working in America. Very exciting to be in America. Uh, so glad I got to see it before it ends. <laughs> it's, uh, I knew it was weird over there by the questions my mum would ask me on the phone when I rang home. Normally she'd ask me things like, oh, have you seen the Statue of Liberty? Have you, have you been up the Empire State Building? And this time when I rang home, she'd say stuff like, so do you reckon he's a dictator? You know. <laughs> but I don't think he is a dictator, I, I, I don't. I, you get a warning. You get warnings that, that someone's gonna become a dictator. There's red flags, you know, like, um, well, red flags, that's a good one. <laughs> uh, in my experience, massive red flags are a massive red flag. Um, <laughs> But there are other warnings as well. You know a regime is on the turn uh, when the legs of the army get up past about 45 degrees. That's, <laughs> that's the giveaway you're going, uh, the big orange bloke doesn't want to have elections anymore. I see what's going on here. Politics isn't a lot better in Australia. You know, I for one, as an Australian, I cannot believe that A, ministers of the government are no longer allowed to have sex with their staff, <laughs> and B, we have that rule because of Barnaby Joyce? <laughs> what is going on? I mean, sure, it means there's hope for anyone, but come on. <laughs> Personally, what I loved through the saga, I liked watching just how red that man could get. Because <laughs> he's a pretty red bloke most of the time. Like, normally when he gets interviewed at Parliament, he looks like he's, he's just run inside after being busted running an illegal cockfighting ring in the car park, you know, <laughs> that sort of ruddish hue. But by the end of that whole debacle, he, he was somewhere on the Dulux pigmentation chart <laughs> between terracotta red and oops, I got my assistant pregnant crimson, you know. <laughs> But I had another great thing that happened when I, when I was in America, great thing, I, I met Neil deGrasse Tyson, the, um, the astronomer, which is incredible, damn right woo, that's right. And, uh, and we had this amazing conversation, he said, you can ask me anything. And I said, can you answer in a cool robot voice like my favourite scientist? And he... <laughs> um, yeah, he found it about that funny too. And. Uh, <laughs> But I like space, I'm obsessed with space. A lot of people think that, that our greatest achievement was, was putting a man on the moon. I think that was great, I think that was number two. I think convincing a man to let us put him on the moon, that shit is incredible. <laughs> like how did that go? All right, so here's what we're thinking, right? We're gonna put you in, well, basically a trash can. And, uh, <laughs> and we are just gonna strap that to a whole lot of the most flammable liquid known to man. And then we're just going to explode you at the moon. <laughs> and uh, you touch it, come on back. <laughs> I don't know, that sounds pretty dangerous. Are you sure this is going to work? Oh, yeah, yeah. We are pretty sure <laughs> that this is going to work. Pretty sure? Yeah, don't worry. We've done some maths. <laughs> like heaps of it. Barely got the rocket built for all the maths we had to do. We've done all the maths and we're pretty sure you'll make it back alive. Man, that sounds pretty dangerous, but, but I guess I will be the first person ever to walk on the moon. Well, not so fast, Buzz. <laughs> That's my time. Thank you so much. Have a great festival. My name's Joe Pickering. Good night. <laughs>